Good morning from Drayton Manor. It's another day, it's another new coaster here in the UK. Gold Rush is opening today here at the resort. It's an Intamin lift and launch coaster with a one meter height limit, so it's suitable for the whole family, but it looks really interesting. I believe it runs on a couple of modes. It's got forwards, backwards sections, but I don't know anything else about it and that's deliberate. So let's head down to Gold Rush. So I've made it up to Frontier Falls. This is where the coaster is located. And of course it's now all open up. Last time I was here, it was all construction fences. And there you can see the lift hill. This does also have a tire launch as well. And we've got people there already riding. So the coaster is now officially open to the public. Howdy, how are you? Howdy, all good. Thank you, man. So heading straight into the entrance, I have to say, it doesn't seem as busy as I thought it was going to be. The queue at the entrance was huge, but no one's actually filtered down to here. So, Rufus Snake Malone. RIP Apocalypse, gone but never forgotten. At least you've been replaced with another Intamin. Confirmation here on the height guide, so it is only a one metre minimum height requirement, which is great for people of all ages. And here we are in the station for Gold Rush. Fridge magnets. So let's have a little chat about Gold Rush. This is Drayton Manor's brand new coaster. Intamin lift and launch, it runs two cycles. I actually saw them running both while I was in the queue line there. Apparently they're advertising online that the second cycle will start at 1 p.m. So maybe they were just testing it a few times. I think that was a really solid family coaster with some very interesting elements. You've got forwards and backwards sections. You've got a, a lift hill and a drop. Then you've got a launch section through the dynamite shed. A few moments, I, I was sat in the second row, so didn't really get the airtime going forwards, but certainly backwards over a couple of hills. So actually a couple of little jumps of ejector airtime there, which was surprising. I think the layout's fun. It will suit people of all ages. It's a really solid addition to Drayton Manor, something that I think they probably did need here to add to the current lineup of, of sort of family coasters they've got, because this fits somewhere in between troublesome trucks and the wave, I think. Weirdly, Accelerator, of course, is a 1.2 and is probably equally as thrilling, so. Yeah, interesting kind of height business there. But of course, the most important thing is it is open to guests of kind of all ages. Like you can get some really young riders on there who can experience their first sort of slightly thrilling coaster for the first time. And uh, that's obviously a really good thing. It gets more people into roller coasters. But I'm not gonna break through it element by element because I need to get a few more rides on it to really kind of assess what's doing what. But on the whole, I thought the drop was quite fun. The sort of the S-Bend Hill was quite cool. The airtime hill that you get after that really didn't do anything for me at all. But like I say, I was at the front of the train. He may get dragged over a little towards the back. I think it's well themed. You've got the little nod to Apocalypse in the queue line as well there. So yeah, on the whole, I think this is a really impressive addition for Drayton Manor. But what we're gonna do now, because the queue's kind of about an hour long, we're gonna explore a bit of the rest of the park and then we'll head back, get some more rides, hopefully get the other mode, because I want to do the backwards drop. That looks really good fun and we'll come back to it a bit later on. And just around the side here, you start to see some of the sort of theming aspects they've got here with uh, a little pond there. We've got some sort of wooden waterway systems there, dynamite sticks and things. So it is all nicely presented. The station building and dynamite building are, are quite nice too. So I think Drayton Manor have done a really solid job here. If you think Drayton Manor has struck gold with Gold Rush, like the video. <laughs> So if you want a pint of Madri, it's £7.80. And if you want a cider, you're looking at nine quid. The souvenir cup, by the way, is from Haunted Manor, which was an event that happened eight months ago. Well, I'm just gonna savour this Coke. It costs four pounds. Oh, it's like liquid gold. Well, it's now time to brave the wave. 
I really enjoyed riding this back when I came for the opening day, so excited to get back on. Uh, still a bit concerned about the throughput of this thing though, because I've been sat there having a drink and only about three trains went through in about 20 minutes. However, the train was filled from front to the back, so that is encouraging because uh, obviously they've been running it with like the back row and sometimes the back two rows not open. Oh no, the queue looks like it's right from down the stairs. Oh, okay. I might not be riding the wave, let's go, let's go and have a look. Well. Yeah, so the queue starts there. They're running one train every kind of five to 10 minutes. I would estimate that at about two hours. And as much as I enjoyed it, I'm not waiting two hours. So I guess they're still having some issues with the restraint sensors on the wave there because I can't see any other reason why they wouldn't be getting trains out quicker <clears throat> with a queue line of that length. But yeah, it's, it does seem quite problematic. And um, like I say, it's a real shame for the park because I thought that was a, as a move, it really upgraded the ride. But if you can't get people on it, then it starts to become a bit redundant, doesn't it? Well, the queue line for Gold Rush has certainly settled down a bit. So might actually get a few re-rides. So joining the queue for another ride. So second ride there was middle of the train. Again, it was mode one. I do think in the middle of the train, it was slightly less forceful than it was at the front earlier. Partly because at the front, you still got the force getting dragged backwards through the backwards section. I think the reverse launch is probably the highlight of the ride, as well as when you get hooked up backwards and then drop back down the lift as well. That's really cool as well. A couple of little bumps of airtime. It's just a really solid family coaster. It, it appeals to a really wide demographic and for a park like Drayton Manor, that's a really good thing. So here's a look at the seating and restraint system. Obviously uh, being Intamin, it's kind of got those um, 13 style restraints, which is uh, quite cool. They so just pull down quite nicely. Um, backs are very hard though. So that's something to bear in mind if like you've got a bony spine like I have. So, but again, pretty nice trains and a bit more of the theming around the ride here. It is very barrel focused. I think that's why a lot of parks go for Wild West theming, to be honest, because it's it's a simple one. But it is cool having these like little bits of machinery and stuff here as well. And Frozen Frontiers, there's a new ice cream stand that's been uh, installed here as part of Frontierland as well. Well, it happened. I got mode two. And that is awesome. The difference with Moto is you'll go up the lift hill to start. It will stop at the top and then it will drop you backwards. That backwards drop was awesome. And I was in the back train, so I didn't even really get the full force of it, but that was a really fun reverse drop. Then what happens as you go backwards into the dynamite shed, you then stop and you get launched back out forwards. So you do this, that part of the track going forwards, whereas you'd normally do it backwards if you go in the other way. And again, sat towards the back of the train, some really nice little pops of airtime and, and whatnot. So this is a really good coaster. I think they've done a really good job here. The fact that you have got that variety there that you can get a different ride. I think it is a shame that it does seem to be completely random. So you could ride this three, four times and get the same ride every time, or you could ride it twice and get two completely different rides. So um, it'd be nice if there was some sort of system where you kind of know what you're gonna get. Um, I guess kind of like Bobby Ann Land do with Fury where you can select or you can have a sort of queue split, which you can go and kind of go into a frontwards or a backwards uh, sort of queue line. So you can have a choice as a rider, but that's a really minor niggle. I think on the whole, it's a really good attraction. It's a really good addition to Drayton Manor. It fits into their demographic perfectly. And being an interpin, obviously it rides well. And I have noticed that when I sat on the right side of the train, as opposed to the left, it does feel a bit more forceful. I don't know if that's just where some of the banking is or anything like that, but um, yeah, I think Gold Rush is solid. Um, I would certainly come here and rush for gold, just don't gush for rolled. It doesn't even make sense. So I'm gonna go and head back to Gold Rush later and get a fourth and maybe a fifth ride, but I'm just gonna spend a little bit of time in Vikings. Hi, I'm Craig Viking, and I reckon you should subscribe to this channel, innit, mate? Well, the key for Loki looked quite short, so I thought, why not? I do enjoy the nebulous. 
Come on then, let's do a disco shot. If you don't do that, are you even a content creator? So I've just ridden the two Asgardian bros, Loki and Thor, and they're always good fun, aren't they? Loki, a Zamperla Nebulus, they're awesome. I'd like to see more of them crop up over here. And Thor being a Zamperla Mega Disco, also really fun. And I'd like to see far less of them pop up, pop up over here because we already have about 96,000 of them. But both two really good additions, I think. And I think this Vikings area as a whole is a really nicely put together area here at Drayton Manor. So when we go to Gold Rush, ride number four. And then I'll really start to formulate my thoughts for you, give my opinion. Of course, it's just one man's opinion and you should always come down and check these things out for yourself. So let's chat Gold Rush. I've had my fourth and final ride of the day there. Uh, it was towards the back of the train again, but I got the opposite cycle this time. So I've kind of had three on cycle one, one on cycle two. I do think cycle two is a much better ride. And hopefully, um, if they get that feedback, they'll, they'll run that cycle more frequently. Because it does seem to be the rarer of the two cycles, just from what I've seen kind of observing the coaster today. But I think it's a fantastic investment for Drayton Manor. I think it's exactly what they need. How they've managed to get a coaster with that, all those elements passed as a one meter height limit, I don't know because the trains are basically the same as 13. I would say the thrill level is probably higher than Jorgmander and uh, an Accelerator, which are both 1.2. So um, I think it just shows the way roller coaster engineering is going, that it does open it up to so many more riders of different ages. And I just think this is a really good investment for Drayton Manor. It perfectly fits the sort of target market. Obviously, it brings a lot more younger guests into the park. And with Thomas Land here as well, or well, most children that go and visit Thomas Land could probably ride this too. And that's quite a cool thing, I think. So on the whole, I think Drayton Manor have done a really good job here. I think the whole frontier land um, looks good. It breathes life back into this top end of the park, which wasn't really here last season. And along with the wave, which, I mean, it does still have some technical issues, but as a roller coaster, I think is a massive improvement on Shockwave. So I think, you've got to say, 2024 has been a really positive year for Drayton Manor. And that's awesome to see. That's what we want to see. And if you go back through the history of my channel, I came here in 2020 and I had a really bad day. And I was quite um, vocal about how poorly operated it was. Obviously, Looping Group then took over the resort two, three months after that, and everything has just been on an upward trajectory ever since. So, big shout to Looping Group for coming in and moving this park in the direction they have. I highly recommend coming down here to check out Gold Rush, check out the Wave if you've not done that already. Um, and you know what? A day ticket here is like 29 quid. I think that's really good value. So, let me know what you think of Gold Rush down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to see my opening day Wave vlog, that's up on the screen now. And um, I'll catch you next time. Bye.